So in today's video, we will be learning about muscarinic receptors. These receptors are actually type of cholinergic receptors. So cholinergic receptors are actually of two types. One of them is muscarinic receptor and other one is nicotinic receptors. They are differentiated on the basis of their affinity for certain agents that mimics the action of acetylcholine. And so they have similar action for acetylcholine but they have different affinity for other agent like muscarinic receptors have more affinity for an alkaloid called as muscarine whereas nicotine has more of the affinity for nicotine rather than muscarine so this is how they are differentiated from one another so let's talk about muscarinic receptors muscarinic receptors actually belong to class of receptor which are g protein coupled we have already learned about G coupled receptors and how they work. If you want to learn about them, you can go to my channel and you can find a video over there about G coupled protein receptors. These kind of receptors are also called as metabotropic receptors. So as I have told you earlier that these receptors in addition to acetylcholine they also recognize an alkaloid which is called as muscarine. And this alkaloid is actually present in some poisonous mushrooms. But these muscarinic receptors have very little affinity for nicotine. So therefore they are separated from those of nicotinic receptor on the basis of their affinity for these agents. So these muscarinic receptors are actually of five subtypes. But only three of them are actually functionally characterized, which are M1, M2 and M3. So now let's talk about the presence or location of these receptors. These receptors are actually present on the peripheral nervous system. So these receptors are actually present on the ganglia of peripheral nervous system. Other than that, it is also present on the autonomic affected organs that can be heart, smooth muscles, brain or it can be exocrine gland too. So M1 is present on neurons and other than that it is also present on gastric parietal cell. The mucosal lining of uh, stomach contains parietal cells which are involved in the secretion of eight positive ions. So these receptors are actually present on these cells. Now M2 are present on cardiac cells, cells of the heart muscles and smooth muscles. Now smooth muscles are present in your GI tract, they are also present in your blood vessels. M3 receptors are present on bladder and exocrine gland. It is also present on smooth muscles. As I have told you earlier that these drugs mimic the action of acetylcholine but they also have affinity for agent like muscarine. So uh, drugs with muscarinic agent prefer to stimulate muscarinic receptors on these tissues but at higher concentration they may show some activity as nicotinic receptor. So if we talk about the mechanism by which acetylcholine signal transduction on muscarinic receptors occur. So first of all there are different molecular mechanism for the signal generation by acetylcholine 
when it is bonded to receptor molecule so if we talk about m1 and m3 receptors in these receptor what actually happen that there is activation of g coupled protein which is gq in this case and we have already learned about gq which is being associated to receptor molecule what happen when receptor is being activated this gq protein is also being activated so if we draw the structure of cell membrane just to clarify the mechanism of action of these agents if we consider this as the structure of cell membrane and this is the receptor which is being coupled with g protein designated as gq when there is binding of some muscarinic receptor over here or acetylcholine what happens that this receptor is being activated and the activation of this receptor cause the activation of this g coupled protein g coupled protein also has three subunits and the alpha subunit actually has gdp along with it so when there is activation what happen that this gdp is being replaced by gtp which is guanosine triphosphate so guanosine triphosphate replace guanosine diphosphate in this way what happen that gdp is dissociated from alpha subunit of g protein so now there is conformational changes because of the activation of this receptor which caused the placement of gdp with gtp so now here it is gtp molecule cause the activation of an enzyme which is also present in the cell membrane and this conformational changes cause the attachment of this g protein to that enzyme which in this case is actually phospholipase c so when there is activation of this enzyme what this enzyme does is that it causes the production of second messenger molecules and now what are the second messenger molecules in this case there is the production of ip3 and dag and ip3 stands for inositol 145 triphosphate whereas diacyl glycerol now there is production of these two messenger second messenger molecules and as we know as i have told you in previous video which was detailed video of g coupled protein that these molecules cause the further as the cascade signaling effect because these molecules are associated with different functions like ip3 is responsible for increase in calcium concentration of cell and when there is increased concentration of calcium inside the cell what actually happen there is stimulation or inhibition of enzyme so two uh, conditions it can either stimulate or it can inhibit enzyme if there is stimulation there will be hyperpolarization and hyperpolarization leads to relaxation along with it it is also re responsible for secretion but if there is inhibition caused by this calcium ions what will happen there will be opposite of hyperpolarization which is contraction 
whereas if we talk about the role of DAG which is diacylglycerol what actually happen in that case this diacylglycerol further activates an enzyme which is called as protein kinase C and this enzyme actually phosphorylate numerous proteins within cell and this phosphorylation by the activation of protein kinase C caused the further signaling cascade effect. So this was how M1 and M3 types of muscarinic receptors show their mechanism of action. But if we talk about M2 receptors, there is presence of a G protein which is designated as GI. As I have told you in G couple protein receptor video that uh, there is common effector for two G proteins that is GI and GS and that co common effector actually adenyl cyclase. So in, so in M2 there is presence of GI and what GI do is it inhibits the action of adenyl cyclase whereas the other one which we have talked about in that video was GS that uh, designated protein actually stimulate adenyl cyclase but GI has opposite of that effect so if we look over here all of this mechanism is similar only difference is that there is different effector molecule present over here GI there is presence of adenyl cyclase and this enzyme actually caused the production of which actually caused the production of cyclic AMP that is cyclic adenosine monophosphate and this cyclic AMP is actually formed from the ATP when this enzyme adenyl cyclase is being activated. Now what GI do is that it decreases the activity of adenyl cyclase because it has inhibitory function whereas here GQ has stimulatory function so it was actually enhancing the activity of effector molecule which was uh, phospholipase C but here GI has actually an inhibitory action so it decreases the action or uh, functioning of this enzyme which is adenyl cyclase and its functioning is production of cyclic AMP so ultimately there will be decrease in the production of uh, cyclic AMP along with the decreasing the function of adenyl cyclase this GI is also involved increase in the potassium conductance so this was all about muscarinic receptors and their mechanism of action. If you have any questions related to the topic, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching my videos.